how she'd actually bring one in on this stage and she would talk to us about what was in her red wagon. And if I was gonna say what was in mine today, I would say, you know, I'm an administrator, I'm a mom, I'm a wife, um, uh, my mom was in the hospital a week ago. Like, there's just a bunch of things in my wagon. And they may be causing me stress, they may be bringing me joy, um, they may be bringing me questions, um, but you can't see it, right? And you know, walking across this campus, you're gonna come into contact with all kinds of folks. Have y'all tried this game? This is my favorite game, when I rock across campus. I try to see how many people will smile back at me. <laughs> because everybody is in their phone, and then if they're looking up, they either, if I smile at them, they either go, <laughs> or they look away real fast, or they're like, hey, do I know her? Like, should I, s I mean, it's kind of the questioning smile, or sometimes I get the, you know, hi, how are you? Or I say, oh, good morning, and they say good morning back. And that is such a lost thing. So if you wanna have fun, please try that as you're going across campus. I smile all the time because there are 2,000 of you and one of me, and there's a high likelihood that it's my student that I'm smiling at, right? So please smile back if I, if I smile at you. So I want you to think about, like, if you're walking across campus and, you know, someone doesn't smile back at you, your immediate response, I'm hoping, is it, well, gosh, that was rude, you know? I want you to think about, let me wait just a second. What's, what might they be dragging behind them? Are they heading to a test that they're freaked out about they didn't get to study for? Or you know, are they stressed because they didn't get the blue book and they didn't know where to get it and they don't have the right pencil? Like, or you know, maybe they just lost a parent. You never know. So I want um, you guys to just think about that a little bit. I'm gonna share a little bit with you. That's a fun picture of my husband and I and my two girls. Um, oftentimes, when I introduce myself to students, they see all the easy stuff. They see my education, that I did my uh, undergraduate at Texas A&M University and I have a master's and a PhD from the University of Texas at Austin. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I made it finally, right? <laughs> um, you know, my personal achievements, I kind of find in, um, you know, being married, it'll be 13 years this October. It's the same amount of time I've been at UT, so I will never forget, right? Um, I have two beautiful girls. One is nine and one's almost four. Um, I've been here for 13 years, and I'm an expert in the field of undergraduate peer mentoring, leadership, and student success. But what you don't see, because it's not really, I don't really put it out there every day, is that I was rejected from UT Austin, Texas A&M, and the University of North Texas Psychology grad programs all in the same day. That was not a fun day, <laughs> okay? I was laid off for my first job one month after I started. Like, I just got my insurance benefits, and they're like, FYI. Like, I came back from lunch, and they only told the people, uh, they told everyone else to go home, and the only people that came back to the office had been laid off and we were to pick up our things and be gone by the end of the day. It was pretty miserable, because um, I had just graduated with my degree. I was like, ah, what's going on? Um, and I began my career at UT Austin as a temp um, with a temporary service here at the University of Texas with the UTeach Natural Sciences program. So I started out at the front desk. Anybody in UTeach? Yeah, exciting, I heard a clap on somewhere. Maybe it was someone that just like fell asleep and they hit the desk. I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, stay with me. I only have like, I only have 10 more minutes, so stay with me. I'm going to get to the good stuff. Okay? Um, and I was delayed in earning my doctorate due to a family um, medical emergency. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that journey um, tonight. Um, so life doesn't stop when opportunities arise. Um, I have my life kind of here um, in 2013, when the University Leadership Network was started. In that year, I was offered the opportunity to begin the program. This is my dream. I'm such a dork. Like, I wrote down like 10 years ago that I wanted to run a university-wide leadership program that produces dynamic agents of change. Look at all of you. Look at all of you. I mean, this is, this is my absolute dream and I couldn't, pass it up. So we started. John was my first hire. It was just John and I and our admin, Denise. And we were like, okay, we're going to do this thing and it's going to start. And we, I got you hired like in May. 
oh, y'all got here in August. It was a little bit of a freak out moment for me, but I couldn't pass it up. At the same time, I was finishing um, my dissertation. I had, I had proposed, so I had written my first three chapters and defended and been declared a, a PhD candidate, but I had to finish my last three chapters, uh, which also meant finishing all of my research, analyzing the data, and then writing it up. Um, and then I unknowingly was walking into a medical emergency with uh, my youngest, Peyton, who was born uh, Thanksgiving of my fourth year in the doc program. So this is a little journey I want to share with you um, about Miss P. Peyton is my youngest. Um, Ava's holding her there. That's my favorite picture of all time because she's like, I am a big sis. This is amazing. Um, so she's our turkey baby. She arrived on Thanksgiving Day. It was a very eventful holiday for us, um, to say the least. Um, but she was yellow. She was very yellow or jaundiced. And you know, a lot of people are like, oh, just stick them under a light. They'll be fine. Well, it was a different kind of jaundice, and she um, had to have her first surgery, um, which determined that she had biliary atresia, which is uh, a very rare liver condition. It's like one in 18,000 kids. They don't know what causes it, and the only way to discover it until now was through surgery, like exploratory surgery. So this, this picture right here is of my teeny eight-week-old, eight um, <laughs> you know, with a million tubes, and it was very scary and they only have one surgery that um, can help this particular disease and it's only 50 percent successful and it's 50 years old so if I have any pre-med students in here you have a project to work on like figure this out okay um, it's only successful um, they, they rate its success after three months and they're they're checking that bilirubin that, that makes you yellow um, in your in your blood levels and hers didn't change so for us, at the three-month mark, her surgery was considered a failure, and we were told she needed to be evaluated for liver transplant. So as a parent, that was really scary. I remember they called me in on a Friday afternoon after hours, and they told me, and like literally when I walked out, all the lights in the doctor's office were off because everyone had gone home. And I had this carrier with this teeny baby and I'm like, whoa, like, what are these next steps going to be like? And it was so awesome for any of you that want to be nurses. The nurses like ran outside <laughs> and gave me a great big hug and said, no, 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 you, you can't leave without letting us give you a hug because you just need a hug right now. So I know there's a lot of medical training out there, but there's not a lot of training you can do to make you a great person to, to see that someone needs care in that moment. So. Um, this was the month that she got evaluated. She looks all cute and happy, but as you, as we keep moving, she gets skinnier and skinnier, and um, she had lots of sicknesses. I kind of learned how to be a nurse. She um, got the same infections over and over again, and um, I had to learn how to do IV meds at home, and I am terrified of all things medical, so I don't know how I got through that part, um, but I kind of just got to a point where I couldn't manage her care anymore, and so on her first birthday, we um, checked into Texas Children's Hospital in Houston, which is amazing. Um, and we got there, this was like midnight, we got there and they had a cake and balloons and like everything just ready to receive us. It was really amazing. Uh, we were there Thanksgiving, Christmas, and this picture is actually at New Year's time. So you can see she got really, really skinny and her poor tummy was just enormous because um, kind of just like retained fluids at that point because your body can't work quite, quite right. But um, we got our New Year's wish, uh, and on January 6th, we got the call that a liver was available. And what is amazing is that someone, I don't know who they are, when I get to heaven, I will thank them. <laughs> they made the choice to be an organ donor, and they saved two babies that day because livers regenerate, and they will, they will regrow. And so she received that. It was, I was freaking out driving all the way because... It has to be a perfect match and it has to be the right size. So we could have gotten all the way there, ready in the OR, and if it didn't look right, then it'd be over. So we did a lot of thinking on the, on the way up. Um, this was her the, the day of her transplant. It was eight hours. Um, they had to replace all of her blood like one and a half times. Um, she was on dialysis because her little kidneys shut down. But she is a trooper. Um, and meanwhile, 
I'm, I'm in Austin every other week during this whole process. And I'm doing conference calls with John and Denise. And I'm having conference calls with the mentors about what they need to do. Um, and I was given the flexibility within my personal network here at work to be able to continue that work. And quite frankly, it got me through. Because in, when you're in the hospital bubble, you're just like, oh my gosh, real life just doesn't seem like it's there. And my work and my dissertation work, I really feel like it saved me. I feel like it kept me sane because I still had something that I was in control of and I could work through that. Um, this is Ava. She's all teeny in this picture. Now she's grown. But that was the first day that she got to see Peyton. Um, she couldn't see her for two months because she was in the ICU. Peyton also um, suffered a heart injury um, and had to have open heart surgery as well. Um, so it's been a little crazy ride, but um, I don't know if y'all can really see uh, very well for some of these pictures, but this is in like training. <laughs> And the kid's got like a scar here, a scar here, and she's all like, what's up? She's working on, on sitting and standing and walking. And this was the day that we left Houston, um, and this was us at home. So we still had some things to manage. But um, through all that time, I actually ended up writing the last three chapters of my dissertation at the Ronald McDonald House there in Houston. They have the most amazing folding table. <laughs> in the laundry room it's like this big and like this wide and no one does laundry after 11 p.m. so my mom would go with me and stay uh, with Peyton upstairs and I would sit and write from like 11 to 2 <laughs> regularly like I would hear the trash truck come in I'm like whoa I should probably go to bed it's like 3 o'clock and I never I didn't really know if what I was writing was gonna make sense until the next day <laughs> I would had to go back and reread before I sent it but um, this is my dissertation committee this is Rich Reddick, he's one of my biggest heroes. And this is Dean Lilly, who's uh, actually now the VPSA, uh, VP of Student Affairs here, and Dr. Sines and Dr. Sanders. Um, that picture was taken on April 21st. We brought home, uh, we brought Peyton home on April 9th. And my, my dissertation committee kept saying, you know, you should just take a break. And I was like, no, <laughs> because if I get home and she's well, do you think I'm gonna sit down and write a paper? No. If anything, through all of this, taught me that life is short. Tomorrow is not promised. And I'm going to enjoy every minute with my family that I can. And so, yeah, it was hard. Did I do it alone? No. I had my mom, my mother-in-law, my husband, everybody. Um, my dearest, dearest friend um, is still working here today in admissions, Miguel Wachleski, who actually introduced me to John. Um, was my running buddy through all of this. This is Peyton today. She's happy, healthy, crazy town. Um, this was her like a couple weeks ago, and this is my oldest, Ava. So you can see she's grown up quite a bit as well. Um, your wagon is going to evolve over time. There are some times when it's going to be overflowing, and you're like, whoa, I didn't ask for this wagon. Like, can I get a return, please? Um, and then you have to figure out what you're going to do with it. I have one more minute, so stay with me. Okay, that's one of my biggest pet peeves for, for speakers. We have you till 10 till, and then you can exit, okay, because this is important stuff. Um, your wagon will evolve over time. It will be light some days and heavy other days. Um, remember that you should communicate what's in your wagon to your network so that they can help and so that we can help when needed. But being a leader is being able to articulate why you do it and to really be able to tell your story. I don't tell that story to make you emotional. I tell you that story because as a leader, ULN was my absolute dream. And I don't care what was going to be thrown at me. We were going to figure out a way to make it happen. And graduate school was my dream. And your kids are your whole world when you get there. Don't get there yet. Um, OK? Um, this week, you all did a really, really great job of sitting in your mentor groups. Please remember, as you come next week, sit in the same area so that you don't have to wander around trying to find the right seat, OK? And if you didn't find yours at your mentor group meeting this week, check in. Say, what area did you sit in? Hold on. I really appreciate all of your attention this evening. You are like my walking dream. So. I appreciate everything that you're doing. When you need help, ask for it. 
and good luck this semester. Thank you.